an infinite fractal universe of, of, of basically an infinite number of Big Bangs. If you find a science textbook published before 2006, you'd see that it'll list Pluto as one of the nine planets in the solar system. That isn't the case anymore. Almost 17 years ago, the International Astronomical Units controversially took away Pluto's planet status. Now, the IAU is in the hot waters again because NASA has dropped clear images of the allegedly dwarfed planet. Join us as we explore the first real, clearest images of Pluto in our history. Every modern technological advancement opens up a new epoch in our strive for space exploration. There's little doubt that we have come far from the first mission on the moon in Apollo 11, but the vastness of space demands that there are many unanswered questions left. And this is where the groundbreaking project of NASA comes in. While James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, wants to find a world of its own, it's also monumental in building up on NASA's former missions. There's a lot of interest in transcribing prehistoric special discoveries, of course, we'd like to know more about the Big Bang and how our solar system comes about to support life on one of its planets. But here's the thing, JWST also wants to look ahead. Is our solar system revolutionizing? And if it is, do we need to look back on our definitive answers about our universe and perhaps reevaluate them? This is where the question of Pluto comes back in the highly controversial realms of space exploration. Thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope and the discoveries it has made, we have more and more room to probe further into the solar system. It seems like the 10 billion investment is coming in handy to turn things around for NASA. And it seems like science textbooks might have to be edited to include everything we know about Pluto now. Only this time, it could regain its planetary status. Here's why. What we know about Pluto today doesn't actually just end with IAU's 2006 controversial decision. It's actually the newly reignited probing pursuits of JWST that have given much-needed pictorial evidence to our theoretical understanding of the alleged planet. Sure, their observations were helpful in categorizing what planets are and what they aren't. The Union didn't actually have a lot of data to bank on. And you know the rule, pictures, or it didn't happen. This might be a very loose categorization, but after the 2006 decision, there were two scientific discourses on the subject. Those who believed that IAU was hasty in its decision to declare Pluto a dwarf planet, and the other that internalized the non-planetary status real quick. For the most, space explorers have remained indecisive on the matter. But of course, as long as the fascinating discoveries of JWST go, the question of Pluto's status had to be brought back. And NASA's first real clear-cut images of the dwarf planet are rewriting our cosmic history. The first and foremost human encounter with Pluto is an endeavor of New Horizons, a mission that has now entered its 17th year. Back in July 2015, the mission achieved what it was set to achieve. It passed by Pluto and its long series of satellites. This was the first time that humans saw the space relic up close and gathered the most holistic data set about its moons and its surface. First of its own kind, the New Horizon missions opened up exponential possibilities for NASA to explore the deep Kuiper belt. The agency knew that it was about time that they'll have a more scientifically robust understanding of planets that lie between the orbit of Neptune and almost 50 AU from the Sun. And it's safe to say that the mission's prime achievement was to fly by the dwarf planet and its biggest satellite, Charon or Pluto Warst. It was also able to give NASA clear images of Pluto's other four satellites known as Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx. The entire data-gathering process, including the encounter with Pluto and Charon, took 15 months. And by October 25, 2016, the mission had collected 6.25 gigabytes of data. So what does the data mean for NASA's information on the dwarf planet? Well, first things first. New Horizon was so particularly groundbreaking that the scientist had to develop entirely new data models for the former planet. Over the course of years, Pluto's surface and its atmospheric conditions had changed fundamentally. Even if the planet's status was made dormant, it was clear that the planet itself is far from being dormant. If anything, it was evolutionizing at a rate that left NASA scattering for revising what we knew about the planet, or an alleged planet. 
New Horizon was a groundbreaking mission for its kind. Its encounter with Pluto was almost eight years ago. Until now, the trajectory of space exploration has drastically improved given the new technological intervention and enhancement with the James Webb Space Telescope. The possibilities are endless. One might even say that distanced missions that delve further and further into the solar system are just on the horizon. That's something that you don't get to hear often. But with JWST, we're limiting the distance between what we know and what we can possibly know. So here's the thing. With missions like New Horizons and any exploration options for planets further from the sun, the problem is about resource prioritization. Why invest millions in researching a scientifically important planet when there are possible life forms elsewhere? Why readily go at the edge of the solar system? Those are some hard-hitting questions for sure. But the New Horizon mission was a turning point in the history of space exploration. Not only did it open up more avenues for NASA to invest in exploring Pluto with tech like JWST, but the mission also officially put it on the map of scientifically valuable worlds. In the case of Pluto, it's a key to build more scientific observations for other small planets. Sure, the dwarf planet itself lies in a cold, dark part of the universe, Yet the first real clear pictures of its surface were groundbreaking, enough to tell us that Pluto is an active object in the solar system. And you know what they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So what do NASA's real crystal clear pictures of Pluto tell us? First things first, Pluto has a heart. You heard that right. Most geological phenomenon on the dwarf planet is driven from its heart, or scientifically speaking, its Sputnik Planitia. In a classic turn of events for NASA, it turns out that Pluto just simply follows its heart. Quiet, literally. A quick glance into NASA's high-resolution captures will tell you that its heart is just white, cold, and almost frozen. And it fits because the heart's left ventricle, the Sputnik Planitia, is actually a million-square-mile nitrogen glacier. This particular geological feature of its surface is actually why the planet's spin axis was reoriented. Scientists call this process true polar wander. Prior to the mission, NASA had no idea that the dwarf planet's basin is opposite to its biggest satellite, Charon. What does this particular reorientation mean for the planet? In simple terms, the tidal axis between the moon, Charon, and Pluto is being dictated by the Sputnik Platonitia. The heart reoriented the dwarf planet in a way that its basin is more in alignment with the tidal axis. We have always known that the former planet is uninhabitable for all the right reasons. What we didn't know that the icy surface of Pluto also causes it to tip due to the imbalance in its mass. Well, when the core of the dwarf planet or its heart is an ice sheet that's four kilometer happen, that's pretty much bound to happen. That colossal mass combined with the tidal yanks can cause the process of true polar wander, where planets reorient their spin axis to find some balance in their own orbit. But the ice sheet itself isn't enough to cause that steep angle of reorientation. The thick, wide ice glacier is heft in its mass, but it's not alone in causing Pluto to tip, let alone produce strong tidal yanks. Remember when we said technologically-backed explorations can rewrite our cosmic history? Well, this is the moment. Scientists also discovered that Pluto is an oceanic world of its own. Beneath its thick ice sheets and glacierized surface, there lies a vast ocean that also forces the dwarf planet to rework its spin axis. This discovery is incomparable in many ways, but mainly because it changes everything we know about the planet. An almost likely presence of an ocean in Pluto's crust means that we have more information about its origins. But more importantly, it puts the dwarf planet up in the list of Titan, Enceladus, and Europa. And if the former planet is thriving in the list of previously discovered oceanic worlds, it's nothing short of extraordinary. It's too soon to say if Pluto's ocean is habitable or not. But the presence of water and bodies like Enceladus have opened up more conversations on habitable oceans in the solar system. For what it's worth, this particular realm of space exploration takes a step further and looks at the habitability of extraterrestrial lives. Are we alone in this vast solar system? It's a question that NASA hasn't answered yet. But the agency also recognizes that the lack of proof doesn't negate the possibility at all. 
What we know is that even Saturn's icy moon, Enceladus, has some possibility of life owing to its phosphorus-rich oceanic water. When NASA's Cassini made this pioneering discovery, the possibility of other forms of life in space or simply astrobiological lives was reignited all over again. Phosphorus is a vital element, as it is one of the basic building blocks of DNA and RNA, the very minuscule possibility of life. How do we know that Pluto poses no habitability whatsoever? Of course, even the most high-resolution clear-cut images of the former planet's crust can't answer that question just yet. So far, there isn't conclusive data to break down the nutrients in Pluto's oceanic water. The optics for such discoveries aren't exactly operational as of now. That doesn't mean that NASA isn't investing in sampling the ice-encased planets, either. Yet the planet delivers in other multitude of ways. And another discovery that shook the foundations of what we know about distant planets is Pluto's very own brand of volcano. So, let's get this straight. Pluto has a heart that reorients its spin axis, might have a habitable oceanic world under its crust, and it is volcanically active. No wonder an entire faction of scientists chewed out the International Astronomical Unit for taking away Pluto's rightful planetary status. But oh well, that's a debate for another day. Right now, let's break this down, the volcanic activity on the ice-cold and frozen planet. Now picture everything you know about volcanoes. When it erupts, the flowing lava is red-hot, and it'll burn anything that comes in its path. For instance, the molten lava from the Hawaiian volcano is as hot as 1250 degrees Celsius or 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. And Pluto couldn't have been more polar opposite than our understanding of volcanoes. By all means, the high-resolution pictorial evidence from its surface has altered our understanding of volcanic activity forever. Sure, the dwarf planet has its own brand of lava, and it's ice-cold, slushy, and the temperatures could be well near zero degrees Celsius. NASA's pictures indicate that the surface of the former planet has fractures that prove a process called cryovolcanism. In other words, the space agency has proof of cold, slushy cryo pouring all over Pluto's surface. The extrusion of that icy liquid and its eventual solidification on the surface means that the dwarf planet will have its own subset of unique physiographic and geological features. And it wasn't just a hunch or a shot in the dark. Remember the heart of Pluto, a.k.a. the Sputnik Planitia? That fascinating glacierized feature also has two hard-to-miss mountains in its southern regions. Respectively, they're called Reitmans and Pickardmans. With missions like New Horizons, scientists got a closer look on the physical geography of these mountainous ranges. Scientists noticed that both Wright and Mons have a deep central crate on their surface. That could only mean one thing. NASA is looking at the mouths of cryovolcanoes. Yet that wasn't enough. Pluto just kept on giving. More probing around the Sputnik Planitia also showed evidence of ice volcanoes in its western region, the Viking Terra. This area on the dwarf planet showed deep fractures and grabbins that must have been carved by the once flowing ice cold lava. By the looks of it, NASA covered all of its bases before theorizing the cryovolcanoes on the dwarf planet. Speaking of covering all bases, Pluto's biggest moon, Charon, was also full of surprises. Not only did the moon show evidence of a volcanic past, it also indicated the existence of oceanic water beneath its crust. Yep. For a satellite of the planet that isn't actually a planet, that's one remarkable discovery. Previously, Charon wasn't as scientifically important as, let's say, Saturn's Enceladus or Uranus's Miranda and Ariel. Now, Pluto's satellite is up there in the list of moons that are important for NASA to discover more icy worlds. We know that our solar system stretches far beyond the so-called ninth planet. But to even design preliminary missions for that sort of deep exploration or reprogramming of missions like New Horizon, NASA needs more and more data on the icy world. And Pluto and Charon are nothing short of fascinating data mines. In doing so, the Moon's physical geography came extremely handy. The high-resolution pictures from Charon showed that its surface has two drastically different terrains. If the south of the Moon comprises a plane called Vulcan Planitia, the North Pole is a rough and rugged terrain called Oz Terra. Now that's just not a massive coincidence. If NASA knows anything about studying the surface of the moons in the solar system, it's that each geological feature has a world of its own. 
And this time, the constant freezing and enlargement of Karen's surface meant one thing. Its crust has an oceanic world of its own. Who knew that we'll know so much about our universe just by looking at mere pictures? But the process doesn't stop there. NASA's pictorial references also show that Pluto has dunes of its own. They're just not like the ones we have on Earth. Now that doesn't make sense, of course. Last time we checked, Pluto was just a large spherical piece of ice. It has a weak gravity, the atmosphere is very thin, and its surface is frozen. But it still managed to make hundreds of dunes on its surface. Well, just like volcanoes, Pluto has its own brand of dunes, heaps and heaps of methane-infused shaving of ices that were eroded from the Sputnik Glacier. And that's just the beginning of what we know about the dwarf planet. With the initiation of the James Webb Space Telescope, we're simply on the edge of space exploration. By all accounts, Pluto's status of being a dormant planet is nothing but a matter of the past. When NASA has clear-cut pictorial references for sophisticated geological features that recently appeared on Pluto's surface, you know we're onto something. And to think, a few gigabytes of data can open up the world of endless possibilities for us. Fascinating, isn't it? Enjoyed this video? Give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel.